Hello friends, this video on human reproduction part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. And the, this process is again very very important. That is the process by which egg is released by the ovary. So the ova are produced by the ovary, it is produced inside the ovary. After that what happens? So basically the ova is produced inside the ovary. After that what will happen? This is the egg. So this gets released and this release of ovum from ovary is known as ovulation. So here if you see this is how the graphene follicle would be. The graphene follicle will rupture and the egg will get released. Who will receive the egg? The egg will be received by these finger like projections called fimbriae. So we spoke about fimbriae, right? So these fimbriae, the uh, finger-like projections will push the egg towards the fallopian tube and that is how the egg will get released from the ovary into the fallopian tube. And this release of ovum from ovary is known as ovulation and ovulation is an extremely important process. Now if ovulation is not taking place properly in any female, in that case the female might face reproductive issues. The female might face problems in, um, in conceiving. So this is how the uh, egg or the ovum looks like. So this is how the structure of the ovum is. So let us understand the structure of the ovum in little more detail. So let us look at the detailed structure of an ovum or an egg cell. So this is how the egg looks like. Egg or ovum they mean the same thing. So they basically has, have the following important layers that is zona pellucida Corona radiata, vitellin membrane, oomplasm, germinal vesicle, germinal spot. So these are the important parts of the ovum. So let us see where each of them are located. So zona pellucida. So where is zona pellucida? It is this layer which is present here. So this layer which we see here is zona pellucida. So this is zona pellucida. Next one is corona radiata. So corona radiata is the outermost layer. So here if you see this one, this is corona radiata. That is the outermost layer. Inner to corona radiata is the zona pellucida layer. And what is there inside uh, zona pellucida? Inside that is the vitellin membrane. So where do we have the vitellin membrane? So vitellin membrane is here. So here you have the vitellin membrane. Sometimes the space between the vitellin membranes is also known as the perivitellar space. Next is the oomplasm. Oomplasm is nothing but the cytoplasm of the ovum. Since it is related to ovum, so the name has been changed to oomplasm. So this is the oomplasm which is nothing but the cytoplasm. Germinal vesicle. So germinal vesicle is nothing but the nucleus of the ovum. So this is germinal vesicle. And what is germinal spot? It is nothing but the nucleolus. So inside the nucleus you will have the nucleolus and that nucleolus is referred to as the germinal spot. So let us quickly look at each of them one by one. First is zona pellucida. So zona pellucida is a thick membrane it exists for some time post fertilization. So once fertilization is done, that is once the fusion between the male and female gamete has taken place, after that a thick membrane is formed outside the uh, ovum, that is the fertilized egg. Because after fertilization, the egg or the ovum is now the fertilized ovum. Correct? So at that time, this layer, the zona pellucida layer is very thick. So it is a thick membrane which is formed. It is like an outer protective layer. So it actually protects the contents which is there inside. The next one is corona radiata. And what does it do? It is a two to three layers of cell attached to zona pellucida. So if you see the corona radiata is like two layered or three layered cells. It is not fixed and it is connected to zona pellucida. This is zona pellucida and then connected to this is corona radiata. What does it do? It, it supplies vital proteins to the cell. So the nutrients or the nourishment is provided by corona radiata. Next is the vitellin membrane. It is nothing but the plasma membrane of the egg cell. Every cell has a plasma membrane. So does the egg cell. 
so the ovum also has a plasma membrane but the plasma membrane is given a different name called vitellin membrane otherwise the purpose of the plasma membrane is the same that is it controls the entry and exit of substances that is why the cell membrane is there in i mean around every cell so they will allow only specific substances to pass through it similarly it will not allow certain substances to come out of it as well so it will control the passage of substances across it Ooplasm is the cytoplasm of the egg cell, as I mentioned, germin, and it supplies nutrients to the growing embryo because now the egg is fertilized because the sperm has, uh, I mean, put his content, contents into this egg. So this fertilized egg is nothing but it will develop into a zygote. So the embryo will develop inside. So it needs, it will need the uh, nutrients, and that will be provided by this ooplasm. Germinal vesicle is nothing but the nucleus of the egg cell and it contains the genetic material like how in case of a sperm the sperm head has the nucleus which contain the genetic material similarly here the germinal vesicle will contain the genetic material and germinal spot which is nothing but the nucleolus of the egg cell so nucleolus is the dense portion present inside the nucleus so this is roughly the structure of the ovum so this is how the ovum looks like so these layers like zona pellucida corona radiata they play a very important role because they provide a lot of protection if they also provide the useful nutrients to the egg cell and protecting the egg cell post fertilization also is extremely important because that time it is not just the egg cell but the fertilized egg which will later form zygote and the zygote will later develop into an embryo and the embryo will later form a new organism altogether. So with this we uh, ended our discussion on gametogenesis. So by now we know how the male and the female gametes are formed. That is clear. So now we will talk about something which is very specific to the females. So it is present only in human females and it is called menstrual cycle. Now why are we discussing this? Because before we talk about the process of fertilization, we should know that when can the process of fertilization actually take place. It is not that every time a fusion between a male and a female gamete is possible or every time a male and a female has intercourse, there will be a baby. That, that is not the case because fertilization does not happen all the time and why it does not happen all the time is because of this menstrual cycle which happens only in females. So let us first try to understand menstrual cycle then we will understand the process of fertilization. So what is menstrual cycle? It is a reproductive cycle very exclusive to females. This is very very important. So the males have nothing to do with it. It is only in females. So this cycle begins at puberty and the first cycle that takes place in a female is known as menarche. So this is the name given to the first menstrual cycle taking place in a female. So it doesn't happen before, it starts at puberty. And it, it is during this time, you remember I was telling that the ugonia are formed before but they get arrested at the prophase one. So and that they, they remain arrested till the person reaches puberty. So this is when the puberty, the person reaches puberty, the menstrual cycle starts and the further division of the meiosis is continued. And it does not continue throughout lifetime. So this cycle continues only till 45 to 55 years of age post which the ovary becomes dormant. So the ovary is not functional anymore beyond this age. So that means any female will remain in the reproductive phase from their puberty till 45 to 55 years of age. So any female after uh, after the menstrual cycle has stopped in a female, if menstrual cycle stopped means the ovary does not produce eggs anymore. Now if eggs are not produced, female gametes are not being produced. So obviously reproduction cannot take place. Similarly, before the uh, menstrual cycle starts, that time also eggs are actually not getting produced because it is in the arrested phase. The ugonia or the primary oocytes are in the arrested phase. So the eggs cannot form. So the eggs can be formed or the female gametes are produced only between this period, between menarche and menopause. Menopause is the name given to the uh, last menstrual cycle after which there is no further menstrual cycle. Now, what is this menstrual cycle? So, we will understand this. So, 
so for now you just understood that this is some cycle which is present only for a specific period of time and as long as this cycle is present the female is capable of reproduction before or after this cycle the female cannot reproduce now again that doesn't mean that if a female enters or it, it, the menstrual cycle begins when she is say 12 years old and her menopause occurs at the age of say 45 so that doesn't mean that the female can reproduce anytime she wants between the age of 12 to 45 that doesn't mean that even between that there are time where when fertilization can happen and there are times when fertilization cannot happen so we will have to understand this as we go detail but what i'm trying to say is this would mean that between the age of 12 years and 45 years the female is capable of reproducing the female can reproduce the female is in the reproductive phase of its life that doesn't mean that any other day she can reproduce it is not like that again there are specific timelines where when the fusion can take place and when the fusion cannot take place but at least the female is capable of reproduction and she is in the reproductive phase of her life so below 12 years she is in the juvenile phase and above 45 years she is in the aging phase or the senescent phase right so this is the introduction of menstrual cycle so if you compare the different uh, ages of a female when a small kid a small baby girl so there is no reproductive cycle because now at this stage the ugonia is already formed because it was formed in the fetal ovary itself so that is already formed but it is in the at the primary oocytes are in the arrested phase so it, it, it doesn't have any menstrual cycle and it is not in the reproductive phase. Now when it grows bigger into a small girl, maybe 7-8 years old, there also it, she has not yet reached her puberty, so no eggs are formed. So she is also not in the reproductive phase. Then she enters into her adolescence and the menstrual cycle starts. Then what happens? The primary oocytes undergo meiosis 1 it forms secondary oocytes and the secondary oocytes further undergo meiosis 2 and ovum is formed so that means egg cells are being formed so the female is capable of reproduction so she entered into the reproductive phase now again when maybe she grew she is growing old and maybe she is around 40 years old so even then the same thing is happening so there is a cycle which takes place inside the female's body during the reproductive phase and again when she goes old grows old the ovary does not produce eggs again further so again she cannot reproduce so now during this reproductive phase also there are periodic cycles where uh, a, the, a process called menstruation takes place in a female now what is this process why this process happens and how this process decides the reproductive um, i mean the reproduction in case of human beings now let us look at the events which take place during a menstrual cycle. Now this menstrual cycle as the name says is a cycle. So it has a series of events which starts from say 1, it goes to 2, then it goes to 3, it comes back to 1. So it is that kind of a cycle. So what are the events which uh, constitute the menstrual cycle? First is menstruation followed by follicular phase which is again followed by the luteal phase and then the cycle keeps on repeating so it is something like this if this is menstruation it will be followed by follicular phase which in turn will be followed by the luteal phase and again will come the menstruation again follicular phase again luteal phase and so on now the question is what is each of these phases so we have to understand that so let us try to understand the men what is menstruation thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.